So I'm sitting here, and it's about mm, 12.30-ish a.m., and, uh, you know, when I get something on my mind to speak about something and when something really lays on me, I always got to go and get it into, into the booth and then get my material out and get my thought process out. Um, so, you know, I was just sitting there and I've been listening to Twitter. I've been watch, watching all the, uh, the newscasts everywhere, um, basically around the country, um, refer, re referring to this whole Odell Beckham Jr. trade thing. And I just wanted to come in on and break some stuff down and air out some of my frustra frustrations with the Browns in general when it comes to how they move and, and if they even are considered trading. And I got some, some things I, I, I really need to critique and really need to get in and break stuff down uh, about the media, about fans, and, and about basic propaganda, right? And so right now, in, in the world that we live in, um, it, it just seems to me that people don't value facts. They don't value information. They, they really could care less whether or not they actually believe it is true or not. It's not about the truth. It's really not about uh, whether or not you believe that Odell, Odell Beckham Jr. is good or not. It has nothing to do with why you say the things that you're saying and why are you trying to trade them. Because if you look back and you just take a step back, it makes no logical sense, right? None. But people don't care about that. They just want to, you know, they just really don't want to actually get into it and get to the root of why is it that the talented athletes, the people who got talent, why is it always a reaction to get talented people off the field or to trade them for what? But yet and still, we can have all kind of other different players that are garbage, that are huge busts. And yet, we let them mill around for years. We let them stay on the roster for years. And then you complain about being 1-15 and 0-16. That, that's one of the, the things that I, I don't get. And we got to get down to the root of uh, cause problem of, why do people have a real major problem with anybody that's really successful, that's really talented, that's really over the top good? It's obvious. I can see that they're good. I can understand it. I can see it with my own two eyes. But why is it, why is it that, that the bar is here for those individuals when, when you got people performing worse than them, but it's give them a chance? It's, you know, continuity. It's, you know, it was Freddie Kitchens. Well, you know, the play calling wasn't there. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a, a solid question. If you have all of those excuses for our number one overall quarterback, continuity, play calling, Freddie Kitchens messed everything up, how can you then turn around and say that Odell Beckham Jr. don't get that same, that same rebuttal? He don't, he's not afforded that oh, let's just be, sit back and be calm. Why? Hmm? Because I don't, I, I really don't think it comes down to whether you think he could play or not. I just don't think you like him. I think you just don't like him personally. And we got to get to the fact, well, we can start calling out stuff, man. There's a lot of people, no disrespect to y'all. There's a whole lot of people that are in this industry that know nothing about what you're talking about. It's just honest. They know nothing about X's and O's. They've never played anything. And they write stories as if they're the omniscient character. One of the worst things that professional football ever did is let writers, writers do the Hall of Fame, vote on the Hall of Fame, uh, vote on all pro. Because for me, if you, if you haven't been immersed in the system, if you ain't been out there working in the system, how then can you judge something when you have no expertise in it? And I'm just being clear. I can't, I can't go to NASA and say, hey, I want to be a space engineer. You're not getting that off. And furthermore, if something happens with a spaceship or some part moves, I can't get on my blog and start writing, talking about, hey, man, you know, I think it was the fuse reactor and the lug nuts came off mixed with the liquid nitrogen and then the fire didn't. Bro, you don't know what you're talking about. 
You ain't been to no physics classes. You're not an engineer. You didn't study no space your whole life. So why would I think that I could come in and give an opinion about something I don't know? And, 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 and the reason why I know you don't is we got to analyze something. Instead of giving a specific answer as to why you think that Odell Beckham Jr. is either not good or he is good, when it comes to you giving a specific situation or showing why he needs to be gone or why he has to go, you can't even give me a valid reason. How many of us times do we hear, you, you know, uh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze? What does that really mean? Hmm? What does that really mean? Uh, he's, he's a distraction. But then you, you, you segue and say, well, he hasn't really done anything and it's probably not his fault that he is a distracted distraction. He just causes a lot of attention. Like, what does that even mean? I can't help it because, it, listen, I'm going to tell you what. If, you're, if you can't play football without crumbling because another dude on your team gets attention, you don't deserve to be in the NFL. Plain and simple. What is this whole thought process about distractions? Distractions from what? Keep it a buck. How, how does Odell Beckham Jr. affect defensive linemen? He doesn't. How does Odell Beckham Jr. affect offensive linemen? By him being on the team and being a distraction, does that mean that, that Jedrick Wills can't block nobody? No. What, what kind of nonsense is y'all talking about? And this is why sometimes I hate my job. I really do. Because I'm forced to come out here and continuously break this stuff down because every time I look around, people is regurgitating nonsense. Ask yourself this. Ask yourself this. We went 1-15 and 0-16. and 16. Tear it all the way to the studs to bring it back up. We finally go out and we finally can get a top-notch person, a top-notch receiver, a, a playmaker. We finally get Jarvis in free agency. We finally got Odell in free agency. Hey, we got Conklin and we got Hooper in free agency, right? But y'all fools would rather go back to 0-16 and, and trade them for whatever you can get? That is the reason nobody wants to come here. It's the exact reason. Nobody wants to come to Cleveland. When people's trying to get Jadavian Clowney, nobody wanted to come to Cleveland. You know why? Because guess what? Our whole town is permeated with people who think that I have to identify with you personally for me to root and like you. That's the elephant in the room. Oh, he, he's rich. He's a millionaire. He, he, got, he got Hublot watches on and Rolexes. And he wore a watch of the game. He dyed his hair blonde. And, uh, you know, he just, did he, did he say something in, in the media? No, not really. It's just, you know, he, I, I just think it's just a distraction. To who? To who? You're a grown man. You are a grown man. No other man is supposed to distract you from what you're trying to do. I don't care how many hosts do something, right? I don't care how many hosts on my radio station, how many beat writers, any of that. I'm going to get my grind on regardless. If y'all don't want to do it, I'm going to do it. See, that's the difference. That's when you come from the bottom. When you come from the bottom and you came in a game with nothing, hey, you ain't stopping me. Why would a fifth-round pick that's about to get cut be worrying about Odell Beckham Jr. instead of worrying about feeding his family and playing well? Getting some stuff on tape. See, y'all don't understand it. You don't get it. You, you, you just say things that sound good. Let me give you another example. Why all of a sudden OBJ ain't did nothing? He ain't said nothing in the media. He ain't been out drinking. He ain't got no DUI. He ain't said nothing crazy on, on Instagram. He has not cursed anybody out. He hasn't gone back and forth with hosts. But let me ask you a question. 
I, find, I feel it really ironic that your starting quarterback has done all of those things. Hmm? He's going off on reporters. Last year, you know what happened? I, I did a blog on it. Why would you ask that question? Going crazy. Okay, you're the quarterback. On national TV, this man said, you know, I thought it was going to be easy. So I, I, we, I thought it was going to be easy, and basically I wasn't working hard enough. How can a person say that to your face and you take it as face value and you talking about why it can work and why it will work and just give it some time? But if OBJ said that same thing, you know what do you do? He'd be on the first thing smoking out of here. But you, Baker, can say I, I, I basically punted the whole season. But you won't hear that. You don't hear that. All you hear is Freddie Kitchens messed Baker up. Freddie did this. And listen, was Freddie the greatest coach in the world? No. But when you on record saying that you didn't work hard and you didn't put no work in, why the heck is all y'all fools lining up to give him an excuse he didn't even give his self excuse for? It? What's the deal, right? Let's let's go ahead and just just come out with this. Baker Mayfield was also the guy who's the quarterback of your team with a feud with Rex Ryan on ESPN, a feud with Colin Cowherd on ESPN or Fox. He's in arguments with, with other quarterbacks when they get drafted because you played against their team in, in high school. Bro, this guy is the same dude. You talk about Odell Beckham Jr. wearing shoes and watches. This dude, Baker Mayfield, is out here in full man shoes, uh, doing all kinds of funny stuff with his facial hair. And I'm not just saying this to knock Baker. It's not about me knocking Baker. It's about showing you the, the, the hypocrisy between what you say to him and what you say to Odell Beckham Jr. And at this point, for me, I'm going to just keep it real. Y'all making stuff up. Like, if you don't like somebody, just say you don't like them. Then we can stop playing all the charades, right? And if you're a person, in, and this is another thing. I'm going to be clear. There's a lot of jealous fans. There is a lot of jealous fans and jealous people in the media. Because guess what? They weren't blessed with that athletic ability. They have to go to work every single day hard. They got to get up. They got to deal with their boss. They got to take their kids to school. They got to deal with maybe marital problems, ups and downs of regular life. Maybe they got hospital bills. But guess what? They take that and transfer that energy to athletes and say, you know, I mean, they're out here playing a kid's game. All that money and, 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 and they're playing a the kid's game. I'm, I'm starting to detect something. I'm starting to detect something. Let's keep it real. If you're going to say that about an a, a athlete, why, why, ain't nobody, why ain't nobody talking about actors doing the same thing? Nobody talks about actors running around. You're getting paid to play house and to role play with your kids. That's a kid's game. Kids get up and have fake plays. Why should we pay millions to these actors? I know the CEO doesn't do anything. And he's getting money hand over fist. And all the rest of his people are doing the majority of the work. Why does he get paid? No, nobody says that. Nobody says that. When 16-year-old tennis players get millions, nobody says that. Roger Federer out here playing a, a backyard badminton game. You see how crazy that sounds? And it ain't the fact that, 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 that the athletes is doing nothing wrong. It's the fact that people literally wish that they had what you had. And so because they have that, I have the power of the almighty pen. Let me write something. Mm, let me get in here. There's been rumors that the Browns are moving Odell. Mm -hmm, sounds good. You know, he's not really a distraction, but he might. Yeah, matter of fact, screw it. He is a distraction because, you know, Baker Baker was good as rookie year, and then now he's garbage. And, and uh, 
I know he, I know G. Bush just sent me a film of, of how many throws he overthrow and, and how many his pocket awareness is terrible. But I got to figure out a way to 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 just make this whole Odell Beckham Jr. I got to figure this thing out. Really? Because that's exactly what's going on. It's exactly what's going on. And it pains me to have to get up, come in, and once again, keep debunking things. I can, and the crazy part about it is, I went on Twitter and I showed route after route after route after scheme, after mistake, after protection. I showed you case by case by case. And people still came back to me and said, well, I, I, I just think I just think that, you know, it's Odell. I just think that. No, you don't get an opinion. No, you don't. Because your opinion, you know, that, that's great. That's like my, a five-year-old kid saying, you know, it's just my opinion that the sky is purple. Unequivocally false. I don't care what that kid said. That's dumb and stupid. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised. Half the world don't believe in global warming. Half the world don't believe in nothing. They just, I'm a contrarian. When we was one in 16, everybody was screaming at the top of the mountains. This is a travesty. We don't got a quarterback. We don't got no skill positions. Y'all want Muhammad Masku wall back? Y'all want Dwayne Bow back? What about Rabisky? Bring him back. He was so potent. All that good stuff. Let's, let, let, let's bring Carlton Mitchell back. Maybe I should bring the, the names from the back from the past. Maybe we should just make Cribs a receiver and get him together, right? You did all of that, all that losing, to put yourself in a position to make the playoffs, to do something. And, and instead of holding your quarterback accountable for he not progressing and doing nothing, you just want to close your eyes and point to something. Oh, okay, just put it over there. Let's see what's hiding up. But I ain't about to, I ain't going for it. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to go for it. Um, if, if I got to do videos every single day, I'll do the videos every single day, right? I, but you're not going to keep doing this stuff in the media, and fans is not going to continue. It, it's almost like it was a clock in people's head to when they can say he's a distraction. And another thing that, that, that I'm, I'm going to get to this and I'm going to close on this point. I'm a manager at my other job. I manage about 40 people, three different states, three different states. We're managing people, different, um, different qualifications, different education backgrounds, different backgrounds in, in, in demographics, diff just different and diverse, West Coast, Midwest, East Coast. Now, as a manager, when I go into interview and we have, we have open positions for individuals, right? Open positions, and I'm interviewing. When I get the resumes from these individuals, and I look at them, the one thing that I always got to keep in mind is everybody is not going to be an A player. What does that mean? Everybody off the street is not going to be your top choice. If you're a great candidate, you're going to have multiple companies that want to, to, to bring you into their organization and employ you, right? So you got options. So at the top of the food chain, there may only be a couple, 5%, 3% of people at the top that is considered A+. Plus. And when you, when you interview them, you got to understand that even if you give them an offer letter, they're going to take two weeks to do the other interviews they got set up. Because you know you got them. You see the resume just like the other employers do. You know it's impressive. So then you go to your B players. Then you got your B players where it's like, okay, these people look like they could really be a good fit. Um, they may need to work on a few things here or there, maybe organization, maybe, uh, you know, center communication skills, multitasking, but I think they got the basics down. And I think, you know, if we put them in, they'll be a solid citizen 
They'll continue to work, and, and, and hopefully we can bump them up to an A player with some work. But then you got C players, right? And you got people who are just basically average, inconsistent. Maybe they got attendance problems here or there. Maybe they have trouble comprehending some of the tasks you want them to do. Maybe they don't work fast enough because they're not processing the information correctly or fast enough. Now, if I'm going to go in an interview and I got eight, eight positions left and I keep getting people that are C's, at one point in time, I'm going to have to actually take one of those individuals that are C's, right? Because I'm held responsible for production. If I don't have butts in the seats, if I don't have people that are working, I, I can't hit my production goal. So or for me, I must then go out, hire somebody that may be average, that may be on, their ceiling is only being good, but that's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of coaching, um, reassuring them, putting detailed uh, plans together to make sure that they're going to hit a certain level and to continually work on them and work on their game, right? But guess what? That's what I get paid for. I can't go to recruiting and say, you're giving me terrible candidates. They're going to say, well, well, listen, you ain't going to have a team made up full of A-plus players. You're going to have to develop some people. You're going to have to put some time, energy, effort into some people, right? And that's what they pay you for. So you say, G. Bush, and I always say it like this. What are you saying? What's this analogy? When you are a head coach, they hire you not to just call plays, not to be the face of the organization, not to just sit there and talk to the media, not put game plans together, not work in free agency and scouting and all that other stuff. As a head coach, you know what they also pay you to do? To develop your people, to develop your people to put time in and work on your areas of weakness. That's what they pay you to do. You're not going to get finished products in the draft all the time. You're not going to get home run free agents all the time. And even if you do get some of those prospects, you're going to have to spend your time, energy, and focus in developing them the best way to get them to where you need them to be. So why is it always a knee-jerk reaction when some player does something, some people don't like it, blah, blah, blah. The first thing they say, we got to cut bait. We, we, we just got to trade them. We, we, I, I ain't got no time for that. When in reality, that is what your time is for. In reality, that's always going to happen. In reality, every single football team has personalities. Every single football team is not made out of, of church choir boys going to church and doing community service. That's not, the, that, that's not our society, right? So you have to ask yourself, if every time something happens, your first reaction is to fire people, you are not cut out to be a leader. You are not a leader. You are a front runner. Everybody can run around and be cool and talk this talk when you're winning. But when you you taking L's and you still got to go put game plans together and coach people up, when you still got to do that, that's when that's when 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 you become a leader. That's when you become the people that that people will follow. And I'm not about to get rid of people and talent. Because I lack the communication skills. I lack the emotional uh, uh, awareness. I lack the, the, the ability to motivate my players. So every time something happens, they got to go because I, I, I obviously can't deal with it. That's not the way life works. It just doesn't. And I, I think it's kind of lame that I got to come up here and talk about all of these different life things when y'all should have this down by now. We cry and complain that nobody wants to come to Cleveland. When they get here, you want them on the first train out. You want to cry and tell that, you know, the front office ain't going to get us nobody. They go get somebody. You, got, you have to develop them and put them into a scheme and get them to football. All of a sudden, they're forcing it to them. They're forcing it to them. 
And let me give you this. And I swear this is the last one before I go. I, I'm promising you. Let me adjust my situation, man. Playing around with me. This is crazy. If you are a quarterback and you are a franchise quarterback, it should be insulting that media people and fans is coming to your aid like you're a damsel in distress. You, I'm the signal caller. I'm the signal caller. If they ask me, well, you know, what, what's going on with Odell and you? What's going on with that? Or Odell comes to you on the sideline and he wants the football. If you are a quarterback and you are a franchise quarterback, you tell Odell this. Hey, listen, dog, we're not going to keep talking every time I come to the sideline and you want the football. We're not going to do that, right? I'll get you when I get you. I got the C on my chest for a reason. I don't need no help from the peanut gallery. I don't need no help in the newspaper. I handle this myself. I'll talk to Odell. I'll get with him behind closed doors. Because you know what? The greats do that. Mannings, Roethlisberger's, Brady's, Breezes, those kind of guys. Patrick Mahomes, those kind of guys. Tell people, I'm the dude. What you mean a distraction? He ain't no distraction. I'll get him together. I'm running the ship right now. That's the kind of leadership you need. And if you got a quarterback that is so feeble that a receiver asking for the football puts him in a tank, you never had a quarterback. You never had one. If you so emotional, oh my God, I just, I just freeze up. Well, Odell wants the ball again, and I don't, I don't know what to tell him. Well, somebody put the, raise the white flag. And y'all, y'all corny for even suggesting it. Men don't talk like that. They don't. No, they don't talk like that. And they definitely don't talk about that in, in, in organizations. They don't. Bill Belichick. Fools y'all every time. You got Cam Newton out on the market, right? Cam Newton on the market. He's a distraction. He wears funny hats and his hair's weird. He, he, I think he's kind of phony too. So the rest of y'all dummies went into the season with these bum quarterbacks and you let Bill Belichick get Cam Newton. I didn't even hear some people talking about, well, we need to trade Odell to, 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 to New England so they can win the Super Bowl. I don't understand the rationale. Everybody ain't a Boy Scout. Everybody ain't in, 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 in Troop 1506, 3rd Battalion, 9-year-olds out of Des Moines, Iowa. Ain't nobody, everybody know Boy Scouts. We all grown men in that locker room, and we're going to get it done. We're here for, for one purpose. And if Odell's pouting, it's my job a, a, as the quarterback, the head of this team, to get him and to get Jarvis and to get Hunt and to get Chubb. And come here. Let me talk to y'all real quick. Listen, that game we played against the Ravens is unacceptable. I, I, I'm going to own that. There were some reads out there I didn't have. Got it. But there are some balls you dropped, too. There's some times you was open, I didn't see you, and, 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 and Chubb, you, you fumbled the rock. But here's what I'm going to tell you. We ain't leaving the facility until we figure out how to get that chemistry. We're not leaving this building. I got all day. We, we sit here all day. I got a cot right downstairs. We need, you want to be in a Drake video? That's cool. Throwing the ball with Drake in the middle of the night? No, you're going to throw the ball with Baker. Throw them with me, middle of the night. I need y'all here at seven. I need y'all here at seven so we can start going over this game plan. That's what I need y'all to do. I'm going to be right and ready. All right? We good? Let's break. That's leadership. That's how you get on the same page. That's how you do it. Not, oh, I don't know. 
oh, maybe we need to just do this. Maybe Baker, you know, it's just he's it's, it's too frustrating. Listen, if he that front, if he if he is that fragile, I do not want him as my quarterback. If he's that mentally tough, how you think he gonna lead a drive down the field? And he worried about Odell Mack because he didn't get the ball. And to be true for, truthfully, rightfully so, every time you threw the ball, I'm on the deep ball. Don't act like I didn't see you airmailing these deep balls. We didn't point it out. We didn't point it out. We pointed out all of the inaccuracies, right? But right now, I'd say I'm not even really more upset with, 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 with the Browns, but I'm more, I'm more upset. Uh, at, the, at the people that represent these colors that don't want nothing better. Y'all, y'all, listen, I really think that you really, your, your whole identity is wrapped up into being the lovable losers. Your whole identity is, is sitting out here letting other people from other crowds and other stands come tell you how terrible your team is. And you got laugh and yuck it up. <laughs> yeah, same old Browns. Yeah, same old Browns, you know, you know, it's just, you know, just part of being a Browns fan. What kind of crap is that? You want to be the butt of every joke for the rest of your life? Do you? Well, that's what you're looking like when you get on these books and when you get out here talking about, we, it, it, we need to get something for them, anything for fit. Bro, listen, bro, listen, I ain't got no time for that. The problem is that when you're talking about the Browns and when you're talking about athletics in general, if you ain't competing or if you ain't never competed at the highest level, I'm talking about it's me versus you. We're going to compete until one of us pass out. If you ain't had that urgency, you don't understand what and how dumb this sounds. Your whole mentality is wrapped up in losing. Break the curse. You think that you're going to trade him for two fourth round picks? We can't even hit on first round picks. You're going to get a four and a five. And then guess what? You're going to still sit here and see Baker Mayfield double clutching, double pumping, and doing all of that other stuff. Because it ain't, it ain't one receiver. I can understand if he just overthrows OBJ. No, he overthrows tight ends. He overthrows Jarvis. He overthrows all these other cats. He still does. And contrary to the popular belief, the man still had 1,000 yards last year. What other receivers in Brown's history was getting 1,000? I'll wait. Thought so. Y'all running around like, 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 oh, he's, he had 400 yards last year, G. Bush. No, he had 1,000. It's the best. Him and Jarvis is the best joint shot got. But once again, y'all addition by subtraction, guys. Because there was people out there that said the same thing about Kareem Hunt. Oh, we, we got to get rid of Kareem Hunt. You know, just, you know, <laughs> problem. Now everybody, a year later, oh, yeah, Hunt got the child. You know, Hunt is, yeah, we, we'll take him. No, you was on the same party train last year with Kareem Hunt. Anytime you get somebody in Cleveland, it's a matter of time before somebody says, uh, you know, we, we might just want to break it, tear it down. And I'm not tearing it down from, for a quarterback that I don't even know going to be on my roster. You crazy? I'm going to just wholesale my whole roster. Wholesale it. We don't need that no more. We got Baker. Says who? Says who? I just want to say overall. I just want to say overall. In closing. Don't be a hater. Don't be one of these dudes. Like, I, I can't stand haters. Don't be one of these dudes that if somebody got something more than you, 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 you just hating. Like, if I'm going to talk about what's happening on the field, I'm going to talk about why supporting details, visuals, facts, uh, uh, you know, statistics to back up what I'm trying to prove to you. But this stuff about just saying blanket uh, propaganda words of, 
you know, he's just a, how you, how does that even sound? Like you can't even say that to, you can't even say that to your kids. If your kid in a, in a classroom and he in sixth grade and you go to the parent teacher conferences and teachers say, well, you know, Johnny is pretty good. Johnny's a nice guy. He's good. But he, he starts hanging out with, um, with, with Tim. And when those two guys get together, they really, they just disrupt. They just dr disrupt the classroom. You know, he's a really smart guy, but he just gets unruly. And, you know, when those two kind of mix, it's just kind of a – and I think, I think Tim is actually a bad influence on, on, on John. I, th I, I really do. Um, I think he's a bad influence on him because he, he's not like you. He, he doesn't have the background with his family like you, you guys are in his life. You know, Tim, Tim doesn't have that. So I, I think he's a little bit of a, 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 a bad, bad person to be hanging around doing some of those things, right? So the teacher tell you that in the right parenting trick would be you go to the source. You go to your son and say, listen, I was at parent teacher conferences and uh, teacher told me you've been hanging out with this little dude, Tim. First of all, let me let, let me let you know something right now. Put them video games up. You ain't playing them. Second of all, 6 a.m. up, ready to go. 6 a.m., whether it's a workout or, or whether we're doing math facts, whatever it is, it's not going to be fun. And I'm going to let you know something right now. I better not ever hear you talking about hanging out with him or being around. If that dude is right next to you, you better look like you saw a ghost. That's what you better do. We, we cool? You understand that? We cool? All right, then. Give me them take, wrap that video game up, hand it to me. It's going in the closet and, and, and set that alarm for six. That's how you handle it. But y'all cats is the same people that go to parent teacher conferences and say, well, you know, Tim is a, you know, Tim is bad. You know, teachers say, Tim, you know, he, he's a bad influence on him. And you say, well, you, I think you should just move. We got to move, uh, what's the name, Johnny out of the class. We got to move Johnny out and, and take him to another class because, you know, he, the root of the cause is Tim. So, so why, don't we, why don't we either just take Johnny out or better yet, let's just take Tim and move him somewhere. Is it possible you can move him to another class? You mean to tell me? You can't control your own son and you talking about what somebody else's kid do. I don't care what that kid do. You're going to sit here. You're going to mind what I told you and you're going to be focused for the rest of the year. Not with Browns fans. Baker Mayfield is erratic. Baker Mayfield, it, it, he, sometime, last year he's a loose cannon. His footwork is bad. Pocket present and awareness and all this other good stuff, right? But your remedy Instead of going to Baker Mayfield, like I went to my kid and said, listen, Baker, that read over there, you messed up. You overthrowing the rock too. Come on, 6 a.m. We, 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 we looking at film. Second of all, when you off the field and you, you come back to the sideline, you need to be over there with Odell talking to him. You see how Tom Brady do it? You see how them guys do it? They ain't sitting on opposite ends of the spectrum. They over here getting it done. Being ready to go. I need you over there doing that same thing. That is leadership. That is how your team gets good. And that is how you build chemistry. Chemistry don't come off the street. Chemistry comes from shared adversity. Chemistry comes through the shared pain of playing a season, losing tough games, off-season conditioning, lifting them weights. That's where it comes from. Adversity. Nobody don't get better in life. You don't get better in life when good things happen. You get better in life when something happens, you got to get back up and figure out a new game plan. That's when you do it. That's how you get better. So for all those that said, what's, what's the, what is the, what's the magic bullet? What's the magic elixir? elixir? The magic elixir is this. The person on that, on that team with the C on his chest 
They get the biggest contracts that you can't hit by NFL um, NFL rules that, that get all the endorsements that are the most public face of the franchise. He fixes it. Not the other way around. Because if you've got D linemen, receivers, DBs, Joe Thomas, that can't happen. You see what happened when Joe Thomas was the unofficial spokesperson. The Browns were garbage because they didn't have that dude under center with the C on. I'm done talking. I'm going to go to sleep, maybe. But this is for all the folks out there that really want to talk about what's really going on instead of being a bandwagon, fair weather, uh, cliche having armchair quarterback. As always, hit like, hit subscribe. I'm, you know, I'm, I'll be back tomorrow with the recap. But you know what it is. It's the Barbershop Peace.